Like from black and white to uniform aesthetic. It's called Dark Vader because it's all black. <laughs> really, it's called Dark Vader. I'm based in Croatia, and my, uh, well, I mean, I studied dramaturgy, which kind of means I have some proficiency in playwriting and screenwriting, and also working in, in theater, um, as a sort of like, well, dramaturgy is kind of a discipline of people who take care of like the structure and text of theater shows. They're kind of like the right hand of um, theater directors. But nowadays, it's kind of a field which is uh, much more wide in a sense. So um, it has to deal with all kinds of performance uh, practices, from contemporary dance to something that's quite out of the box and maybe not so easy to position. So um, even though I'm kind of like uh, also in this very conventional, conventional settings of just playwriting, I also do a lot of stuff which are a bit like unconventional in the way of how they deal with text and performance and all of that. And this project is kind of a reflection of this. So um, this is a project that I did specifically coming uh, to Zaratan and it kind of um, emerged from this idea of mine to do something with the text where kind of it performs for itself. Because writing for um, TV or films or theater, it usually means you write something and then you give it to like another group of people to do something out of it. And what interests me is kind of how can I make this like the work of text perform by itself because a lot of it is already kind of like the performative dimension of it is already kind of written in when you're um, uh, writing anything uh, performative. So this is one of my interests. Also, um, I did my MA thesis in um, connecting game design and uh, performance. So I'm very much interested in like participatory and, and interactive experiences. Um, so therefore, this is also a reflection of that. And as you can see, don't know how to react to the process for you. <laughs> Uh, the whole idea of the bureau came from the sensation that, yes, we are overly stimulated in this uh, modern world. And I feel that sometimes it truly results without being apathetic to, uh, to the amount of information and different information we get in. Or we have this like over anxiousness uh, that also a product of, you know, being just alive in this moment where you're kind of like, are bombarded with all types of um, all types of uh, information from your personal ones, like to like back if you're, if you're talking about you know social media and your private life to the fact that you know like at each point uh, of day you can find it about I don't know people dying in this and that part of the world or you know some new technology being developed or whatever. Um, so 
yeah. Um, as I said, my kind of interest is uh, interaction and in that sense, interactive uh, narratives. Uh, so the whole idea of the bureau came from I wanted to offer a space for people to share where, when they feel everything or like they feel or when they feel they don't feel like anything and give me um, input which can be whatever so it can be like a personal event it can be you know just something you ate that day and it made you feel bad <laughs> Or it can be something that's more uh, general, like, uh, I don't know, the anxiousness from climate crisis. So it's completely up to the person. Um, how it works, you actually get a form that kind of guides you um, through this process. And this is a, a way of how, like, this is the, the official first protocol of the bureau. Um, so, as you can see, you have like two options. One is like we can keep on talking about your emotional experience, which is uh, let me feed you more info about my gut feeling. And um, this is also, um, it's an optional thing, so you can always keep about like talking too much about it. And then the second interaction is you kind of choosing what do you want the bureau to do for you? So what kind of reaction are you expecting us to give for you, to produce? For you and it's also something you can completely randomize so then it comes to the bureau to see um, what will they give you and in the end um, you do you get your um, reaction process and it can as you can uh, see take from 7 to 355 days because you know bureaucracy is always so slow um, this was the setup uh, in Zaraton as you can see, this is the original manager. He's uh, one of the um, chiefs of this bureau. Uh, I'm only but an assistant to the regional manager, so I'm quite just like a clog in the machine. Um, and yeah, this is the performative setup of the work. So how it um, how it was envisioned? We sat there, me and the original manager for uh, four hours in our first pop-up office, which was here in uh, Lisbon. And uh, we offered um, our services, which meant we allowed the people to fill in the form and to um, put it in our ballot box. And therefore, afterwards, we reply with um, custom-made teller responses depending on, on the input. And uh, how the care bear came to be, and this may be like more from like the artistical side. So as I said, I'm mostly a writer and a dramaturg, which means I'm mostly behind the scenes and I'm not very, um, I don't feel necessarily very comfortable performing. So, you know, it came from this sensation of protecting yourself under some kind of like aesthetics or some kind of uh, extension. And this is how I kind of um, gave the responsibility of the office uh, to the bear. But also he's like so fluffy and comforting, so you know, like why not? And uh, during the whole uh, process of us sitting in the borough, of course, you know, the borough is always keeps, has to keep on working. So uh, I kind of gave myself personally a task um, to um, journal throughout the whole process and to kind of also think uh, um, about my own uh, emotional processes because it did you know start from this emotional impulse that um, I think we can all relate to um, of you know kind of balancing through like this complete uh, fatigue of thinking and feeling anything up to a point where we are like um, completely overstressed and you know just kind of um, being in this state of like uh, Weltschmerz <laughs> um, taking up on like all the heaviness on the world um, on us yeah it's a bit more um, from the office so this was like the form you could uh, you could fill in and uh, afterwards uh, I hope to so this was like a physical office uh, I did here in Zabaton, but I do hope to, and I will, uh, 
set up like an online version of it, so it will be uh, available to anyone who kind of finds us in the vastness of internet. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, all the people in need of reaction services will manage to find us. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I kind of, this is more for me than for you, I guess. <laughs> So this is kind of like how it all uh, came to be and this is also kind of like all the things I'm in generally interested in and I think uh, I'm happy that kind of like this uh, project that was really only um, conceived in this space and time in Baratum um, that I feel that it kind of contains all the things I am personally as an artist uh, inter interested in. And this is like finding how can you know how can text operate in space and time? Uh, how can it kind of become a performance um, in itself? And uh, how can this process um, be shared? So how can I, I how can I form interactions and you know participative experiences which are um, rewarding for you? but also for me, of course, as an artist. And kind of like, it's, for me, it's always this, uh, the dynamic of the relationship, because of course, kind of like, when it, I knew, there's a lot of like, uh, um, at least when it comes to like performative practices, there's a lot of this like, you know, giving the, giving the audience the power to kind of participate in the artwork. But in my opinion, the, the artist is always in sort of a position of power. So you know this never this never goes away, and I think that's also kind of okay. But then I think it comes to the artist to really you know give a rewarding experience um, to the person you know who is interacting and participating in in your work. So this was kind of like the idea because when I was creating this kind of like the protocol, I wanted it to be kind of like fairly simple and abstract in a way and, and, and funny and like this idea of connecting it with like food metaphors and like uh, playing on words when it comes to like uh, food eating things. Um, it came from this idea of, you know, we, there's a, it's scientifically proven that we truly do process our emotions first through like our stomachs. So you actually feel it before in your like stomach part of the body and then it's kind of like rushes through your mind and then you rationalize it. Um, so yeah, I wanted it to keep fairly intuitive and simple for the person that comes in. And then it's actually my responsibility of the of, of as me as a writer, as an artist, to, to you know to give a rewarding um, response uh, uh, to this. Um, and what I'm particularly interested in, and that's why kind of like all of these like uh, very childish uh, aesthetics came to be, is kind of like how can we, how can I as an artist or how can we kind of uh, as people um, take upon serious business uh, through a way that is more playful, that is more uh, humor-like and kind of bring some ease into it, but not to um, not to kind of undermine the, the seriousness of like situations and our emotions, but to really you know to um, break these barriers because you know humor and and you know all these kind of like things that um, that we can identify with because of course everybody like at some point of their time had like their plush little toy that they loved um these are like things that in my opinion can can form connections and can it can create this like magical space this comfortable space where we are um more um keen to actually get in touch with like maybe some things which in a more serious environment we couldn't access to and um, when it comes to like the why why it became a borough and like why the response time is like from seven to three hundred and sixty five days, so one is like very practical, which is you know I have a life, so I cannot be really uh, I'm not ChatGPT, so I cannot really be processing everything in like real time all the time. But also I think that um, you know we have been like our um, patients and our um, 
yeah, our patience has like really um, lost on in, in value these days, and like we are so used to everything being like uh, in, like instant and like in, in you know two seconds. Like so, anything you want to look up, you can do it like right now in like one millisecond, and you like get all the information you need. So I think like this kind of like the allowing the time to just be to to, to just pass is also something that I wanted to reference and I didn't want to have like this kind of like immediate interaction but kind of like leave um, the time to just uh, uh, to, to flow. Um, and yeah, I mean like for me, this is like the, the like maybe the second part I kind of wanted to share with you and it's maybe where, um, something we can also like talk about. Like as I come from a more uh, text-based uh, and and theater-based um, background, um, there's sort of this this idea that you know like stories and this all of like kind of like text-based narrative-based things are not cool anymore. <laughs> It's kind of like this notion that like we came to like to the moment of like conceptual art and you know like anything that's that's not in a way like anything that goes to like concrete things and concrete experiences kind of is not like uh, very cool. <laughs> but uh, and this is like something I've, I've actually been you know struggling in a way uh, as an artist. But then I've circled back you know to my kind of school which was I always wanted to be a writer. I don't think, like, I don't, like, with all of my kind of experiences and what I did as an artist for now, I'm, uh, of course, I'm interested in conventional ways of writing, but I also think, like, there's new ways and niches to see, like, how can, like, the exchange of words, because we are still, however much we want to escape from it, we are still, like, um, language-based creatures, and, and this is, like, our, you know, basic uh, way of, of communicating. And I do truly believe that still there is like some um, power in, in coming back uh, uh, to stories and you know to, to sharing stories and, and sharing to this mean. Uh, so you know, so it it kind of like this like finding ways how to you know make new things with um, writing it, it is something that you know continues to interest me and hopefully I will continue to do. Because I truly believe that you know you can only you're best at uh, what you do best, and you know trying to to get to kind of as an artist to just you know go with the trends or whatever it doesn't necessarily um, it doesn't necessarily give you give you uh, an advantage. And uh, yeah, finally, I um, as I said, I really love to combine you know contrast. In, in everything I, I do. So it's kind of like talking about existential questions, but putting some humor, humorous um, touch to it, a humorous atmosphere to it. Um, I love writing, which is like something that's usually very considered as a very sort of like personal um, process, something like there's, you know, there's a big author, he writes a book, it gets published, you read it, that's it. Uh, but I'm interested, like, how can this, how can this be um, taken apart? How can you know? How can you still, like, maybe stay uh, a text-based author, but kind of um, engage your audiences more um, close to you? Um, and yeah, this is something that, uh, is, as you can see, this is version 1.0. Uh, it's gonna get more hopefully developed. Uh, this is something that I've, uh, for like the participants who, who fill the form for now, this is something that they will get. Uh, so it's a bit of like a help book <laughs> to um, maybe help you define your emotions better uh, when you like, when you feel like you don't have the words for, you know, what everything you're feeling. And it's also reaction recipes. So maybe, you know, ways like when you feel like you, you cannot respond to a certain situation, maybe you just look up this and you know, you know, whatever, you choose some fries and, and you adjust your reaction to this. So this is like a little bit of a help book from the girl. 
And yeah, uh, the bear is going with me, this Rachel. <laughs> right now he looks like a sushi bear, by all parts and black foil. And yeah, I hope to um, continue this project with the kind of like the performative bit, but also um, the writing bit. And then we'll see, you know, my boss, I, I, he has a lot of like business ideas. So I never, I don't, I still don't know where will we venture um, further on. But you know, it's so I'm glad this kind of like the journey started here uh, in Lisbon. And yeah, that's about it for me. And if you have any questions, like we can make it more of a dialogue right now. I have a question. You mentioned that you would like to continue on with the project and the process, and you briefly mentioned that the next step or continuation of this would be online. Uh, and my question to you is, um, judged by the experience that uh, the physical performance brought to you, um, would you consider bringing it into the physical space itself, or now you're more curious as to bring it into the digital space? I think I want to continue both because you know opening it, opening it up in the digital space it also allows for bigger visibility. It allows for like different people, different from maybe some other part of the world where I'm not at, to to participate. And I think that will be super interesting to see like you know what comes up. Um, but yeah, I will also want I also want to continue like the performative bit. So maybe like installing do pop-up offices of boroughs where I get the chance to do that. And also, you know, I think uh, because the regional manager, um, you know, he's, he was very excited to do this here. So I think he has like also different business ventures he might go on to. So this is something also that might be uh, in development, I think. It's always good to have a good team member by your side. That makes you feel comfortable, and uh, my yes, you briefly also mentioned about how you're not. Uh, it's not a common practice for you to be on the piedestal, on the in the scene. You're more on the outskirts of the entire action. And uh, um, how was the how how did the process feel for you? Uh, and did it change your perception and your relationship to being put on that spot? Um, I still like, I, I truly believe in barriers. <laughs> that's why I really like, uh, I mean, that's why I kind of, I've, I've decided uh, to, you know, bring and study game design in, in, in my, um, in my practice as well, because it's all about this kind of like rules you set upon and then it kind of allows you to be more free like it, it's a bit ironic but like putting out like different barriers and different like boxes kind of allows you to be more free-spirited in this like game space you're you, you you kind of detach yourself from you being you and all your uh, emotions and all of your like kind of like personal experiences and you take upon like this fun role of whatever, being assistant uh, to the regional manager of the bear, and then it becomes something different. And then, you know, it, it allows, I think for me personally, but I think for anyone, it allows, you know, this kind of like liberation of, of your um, of your everyday sort of like experience in your body. So I am, I mean, like, it's not my first time, you know, playing in this sort of way of, you know, being in a way exposed. I do have, like, some experiences, and I I don't see myself ever being a, a, um, an actress in that, like, very, you know, uh, traditional sense, but I'm super interested in this, like, various forms of, like, setting up performative spaces, but which are not personally only just for me, but, you know, in the sense that are shared. So this is like an office you come into, and like the moment you kind of step into this like very unicorn wonderland, you're also kind of in this world with me. It, it's not a part of the real world. It's something like we, where we're allowed to play, and therefore because we're allowed to play and be, be, because we take up um, take upon some roles, we are more free to talk in a way. 
-hmm. or exchange or, or whatever. Oops. Here is the dog. It's quite interesting how uh, putting up those roles uh, lets you be more genuine in a way. And in that sense, uh, how was the process of, for you? As uh, most of the workload of processing these emotions fell upon your shoulders, uh, what was your relationship with uh, having this input that's uh, made by another human? That that yeah, it's quite quite interesting. Do you did, how did the process of relating to the questions that were posed uh, go through? You know, but what to me is always wonderful about participation and participation experiences is that you never, like, you can never imagine what people will put in. So it's always like a kinder surprise. You open it and you're like, wow, I cannot believe, like, you know, this person wrote this or that and that they shared this or that. So I don't know. I'm like a kid. It's always like I open, like, each letter I open, it was like, wow like i cannot believe this kind of like this interaction <laughs> happened and it's also i think it's i decided like um because as i very much believe in this like role playing and this being like the space of freedom um i also like put in the forms to for the people to not put in the, their real names but like a nickname or something like an, an identity they want to take upon that day um so yeah, that was also, I think, uh, I think personally, it also like allowed some sort of like honesty being put on the paper. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, it's, um, it's, it's just fun. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have like a smart like reasoning behind it, but I don't, like it's kind of like, um, so I mean, now I'm going maybe sidetrack, but like when I was a kid, I always loved to watch like what the, what the people hang, like their clothes. And then like by on, with uh, looking at this, I always like imagine what was their life like, like who is actually living in this apartment or whatever. So it's kind of like this bits and bobs because it's not really, I mean, the form is quite, it's just one page. And then like a lot of it kind of is left to your imagination. So it's just a bit of a spark. Uh, it's not in that sense maybe overwhelming as well as like personal relationships are in like mm -hmm. our basic everyday life. Mm -hmm. And it's it's curious because uh, throughout your um, presentation the entire time I get a deeper understanding to your relationship with games, uh, but there is there can be so so many different. Um, um, relationships, so to say, uh, and reasonings to meddle in this, mm -hmm. and um, it's uh, from what I gather, from what, at least the things that you were saying, is that uh, sparking that uh, interest and sparking that uh, joy, so to say, uh, that's is that the role that uh, the, the the function of the games that interests you, or is there something else there? Um, a structure, for, perhaps, or maybe there is something else about the games themselves that interests you that you haven't yet mentioned. Uh, it's kind of all of these things. So, um, what for me it's always person because like to get someone engaged in any kind of like game like experience, you have to create this kind of like magical world. In whatever sense, it doesn't have to be like this kind of like unicorn aesthetics which I went to for yeah. this time. It can be something you know stimulating in in other senses. Like I did a project where we um, created like a, a board game uh, uh, which dealt like so each participant could be like a ministry of something, and then you kind of negotiated um, in a time of crisis the political measures you want to impose. And like you have like um, on the on the board game there was like a meter that kind of determined are you being successful with your people or not. Mm -hmm. So you know it's it, it can be different types of world, but like for me it's always interesting to think about like what can actually engage people. And it's usually you know it's also about thinking like about our core things like what what in our core interests us as humans as you know as as beings on this on this planet in these particular systems. Uh, social rules and all of that. 
yes, and then again, it's also about like the structure, like how you know how how are these relationships of input and output output uh, form, and and how can, and what is your what is my position as an artist in this process, and like how do I balance the fact that it's me, you know, who is the who is the creator, and like taking this responsibility and taking out of some of the responsibility from the user or player themselves. Um, and yeah, so it's, 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 it's a lot of things. I think that space uh, of games, it allows a lot of things to happen, depending on, you know, what what is your intention, like what do you, what do you want to explore? Because for me, it's actually the, the thing that kind of like, that's my guiding line is the idea of world building. So what I'm interested in is actually like the parallel universe, universe, universes. And you know, what can they allow us and how can they help us, to, you know, to gather something about our, about our real experience. Because, you know, coming into like something that's, you know, fantastical and imaginative can help us also to get in touch with something that's super real. I mean, very simple but like when you read a book it's you know it, it it also triggers some emotions in you which are quite real even though you're reading about like i don't know some wizards in hogwarts but you know you can still you can still relate thank you so much and thank you for your presentation i don't know maybe somebody else asked also of course <laughs> I'm wondering that the stories from the the poems can inspire your writing. And yeah. Then, uh, maybe we can we can do some scenario. And then, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I I've already like I was just talking to Jose uh, how was, like responding to the first set of letters and how like it was super uh, fun fun for me. I also. For me personally, I also like I have this like okay I can always go like free spirit, but I also like set up some methodologies uh, to follow when I respond, which are also kind of like corresponding to the options that the person chooses. But as I said, like I always also have this like, space of like uh, free response if I get like super inspired by something or have an idea that I want to explore. Mm, it's a good also like I, I feel like it's. You know, maybe they inspire something even grander, but like it's a very good like training exercise, and you know, it's it's a very it, it's gonna be it is, and it's gonna be a, a very interesting experience uh, for me as, as a writer to kind of like manage uh, all of this, and you know, you never know what comes next, what is the like the domino effect of all of that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.